You often hear that LCD TVs are so much brighter than OLED TVs, and that OLED TVs just can't keep up with LCD TVs. Well, can the LG G3 prove that theory wrong? And can you feel comfortable buying an OLED TV with all the concern over burn-in? We'll talk about that as well. I will definitely let you know my personal thoughts later on in the video, as well as give you some buying advice regarding these two TVs. But first, we gotta discuss a few of the differences. One of the biggest differences you'll notice right away is the price tag. Yes, the LG G3 will be the more expensive TV. So you do know that going into this comparison, the LG G3 should offer a little bit more than the QN90C based on the price tag, right? Well, that's what you'd be hoping for when you're buying a more expensive TV. And in this case, it will be a better TV than the QN90C in some categories. But there's also some categories where the QN90C will be the better TV. And it's really going to boil down to how you personally use the TV. Use case is going to be a big decision point when it comes down to these two TVs. So we'll definitely be breaking down how the TVs perform in different use cases so that you can personally find the best TV for yourself. I want to make sure that I mentioned that the LG G3 does come with a wall mount bracket and that the QN90C does not. It offers a stand in the box like most traditional TVs, but the LG G3 does not offer a stand in the box. So for the LG G3, you'll have to buy a stand if you want to have it on a tabletop. And of course, for the QN90C, you'll have to buy a separate wall mount if you're going to mount the TV. Now, of course, another big difference is going to be the type of TV that it is. The LG G3 is an OLED based TV and then the Samsung. Samsung QN90C is a mini LED TV. Now, when it comes down to the technology differences, I'm not going to discuss that wholly in this video because I have done breakdowns in the past between OLED versus LCD where I go in depth about the differences and those differences will apply to these two TVs as well. So you're still going to get the same LCD full array strengths and weaknesses. And the same thing could be said about MLA OLED. You still get a lot of the same strengths and weaknesses with W OLED. The LG G3 is still a W OLED at its core, but MLA definitely helps shore up those weaknesses that you would see in regards to some of the brightness capabilities and some of the ways that it displays color. Now, it's not fully the same as what you could expect from a QD OLED, which is something different, but this is definitely a step up for LG OLEDs, and it is the brightest LG OLED that you can currently buy and by the numbers it's probably the brightest OLED TV on the market that you can buy. So it's really nice to see these improvements from LG. As promised, let's talk about brightness and how it can perform in a bright room. The biggest thing you're looking for in a bright room is of course going to be the brightness capability of the display. So when we're looking at that, in most regular content, I have to say the LG G3 was more often than not the brightest TV in the room in regards to the QN90C and that will definitely be content dependent. However, I did run into a lot of situations where the QN90C just didn't look as bright as the LG G3. And this happens when you are looking at content that has a lot of lights, but you're also in a dark environment. So think of nighttime scenes with a lot of lights involved, like maybe a Vegas scene or just a city scene in general. You'll see that the lights will dim down a little bit. In fact, if you look, you can see it in this example here that I'm showing on this comparison. So in those scenes, you definitely have a loss of HDR impact. And so I give that to the LG G3 completely. Where in years prior, the W OLED just won't perform as good with HDR impact in mind when you put it up against a TV like the QN90C. So this is, yes, a big step up for LG OLED in general. Now, are there scenes where the QN90C is the brighter TV? Yes, there are, and it's going to be few and far between though, because most of the time the QN90C just wasn't as bright as the LG G3 in a lot of scenes. And then you're really looking for high average picture level scenes to see these differences with the QN90C where that's going to be the brighter TV. And I didn't run into it a whole lot, to be honest with you. So that really surprised me. The LG G3 was able to punch and hold its own and oftentimes beat the QN90C in regards to brightness for most regular content. I want to stress this, that this is just most regular content, movies, TV shows. When we're talking about gaming, that's a whole different thing. And I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video, but you're going to want to stick around if you are a gamer to hear this, because it's a really important information. But for regular content, 
the G3 is going to be the brighter, more impactful TV in regards to HDR. I really like the G3 and I think this is a powerhouse when it comes to HDR. Now when it comes down to SDR, you're not going to get the G3 to match the QN90C on SDR brightness. It's just not going to happen. So in regards to SDR, QN90C is still the TV to have for people that like bright SDR. Now you still do get some disadvantages with the W OLEDs in mind, always with color. So you do want to remember that you also still have have ABL in place which is the automatic brightness limiter that triggers more often on an OLED TV with those brighter scenes. That said I do like the color out of the G3. I think it's really good for the most part. Of course you're still going to get some scenes where it's not going to look as good as a display that has quantum dots and that's just going to be the W OLED weakness. Sometimes you see that but that MLA technology does help with colors in mind as they do have a lot of improvements over past W OLED TV. TVs, but it is not as good as the QN90C in regards to colors. So when it comes to the use case of movies, TV shows, regular content like that, I really do give the edge to the LG G3 and that would be my preferred TV over the QN90C in this case. With the caveat being that maybe you're in a bright room and the reflections will be kind of an issue for you because I do think the QN90C handles the reflections a little bit better than the LG G3 where that that's a little bit more mirror like but I think in a bright room both TVs are really good at what they're doing just if you have an extremely bright room that's where I do give the edge to the QN90C so why do I give the edge to the G3 for regular content movies TV shows just everything but gaming and I'll say it's just because it performs very similar to a Samsung LCD TV and it's doing this without the QN90C's weaknesses. It's the same reason why I like QD OLED TVs over mini LED TVs because I think it offers almost as much as the mini LEDs but without some of the fallbacks that you get when you're watching in a dark room. So yes, definitely the G3 is going to be the best dark room TV of the two. In the past, people would get mini LED TVs because they can get brighter than OLED TVs. But that's just really not the case anymore. So I think like the G3 or a QD OLED, and this is going to be because the brightness has caught up in regular content. And I want you guys to ignore the actual numbers that you're seeing. 2,000 nits, 3,000 nits, 4,000 nits, 5,000 nits. That's not something you're going to see in regular HDR content. Most of the time, you compare these TVs side by side the way they are now. The G3, the QN90C, regular content. Man, most of the time, they looked almost as bright or the G3 was looking brighter because the QN90C was suppressing some of its brightness to make sure that it didn't show you some of its weaknesses in regards to mini LED technology. So it sounds like the G3 is a clean sweep, right? It's the better TV than the QN90C. Well, not so fast when it comes down to this category. But first, before I get into that, I just want to personally thank you for clicking on this video. And remember, this is not sponsored content. None of these TVs were supplied to me by the manufacturers. I had to go out and get them myself. But if you do want to support or contribute to the channel, the best way to do so is by using one of my affiliate links when buying your next TV. That would mean a lot if you guys do that. So thank you so much. Let's get on to the rest of the content. Now, let's talk about what the use case is where I can say the QN90C is clearly better than the G3. And that use case is going to be gaming. Now, gaming is such a letdown on the G3. Can you get away with gaming on the G3? Yes. Is there a workaround? Yes, there is. And I'll talk about that in a second. But with everything in mind, you have to say the QN90C is better than the G3 for gaming. I've just compared them side by side and I just can't get this out of my mind. When it comes down to the G3 or the C3, you are losing something in game mode this year and in years past, really. Game mode has not been a strong point for LG and G3 really highlights that because you are seeing so much improvements in regards to color and brightness with the G3 but when you get into game mode you're losing a lot of that and it's really just unfortunate to see. If you need proof of this I suggest checking out my C3 versus G3 video where I highlight game mode and I show you outside of game mode the C3 was brighter than the G3 inside of game mode. Now that should not be happening because the C3 is a significantly dimmer TV in regards to the G3 so I don't know what's going on here but it is definitely unfortunate and when it comes down to even SDR gaming, this has always been a problem, but we're going to discuss it anyway. You are not going to get the peak brightness capability of the G3 for SDR gaming. And in this regard, the QN90C will be the choice for SDR gamers who really want a bright picture. 
In regards to HDR gaming, if you have a console that supports ALLM, which is auto low latency mode, and you have the ability to turn on that function, then you do have a workaround where your LG G3 can look as good as outside of game mode. Now you do have a little bit of latency added to that, so you do want to keep that in mind. But if you're not having ALLM, then the QN90C is going to be the TV of choice there. So HDR gaming, I do say the G3 can be better if you have that workaround available for you. And for SDR gaming, of course, the G3 is not as great as the QN90C because you are locked out of your peak brightness for the SDR gaming. And we're talking about the QN90C, which is a mini LED TV. And with that in mind, the SDR brightness for game mode is going to be better in that case. In regards to input lag, they are about the same. If you're talking about fast-paced competitive shooters, that's going to look better on the LG G3. That's going to feel better on the LG G3 because it does have a faster response time. So those FPS games will be better on an LG OLED in regards to a mini LED from Samsung. Now, when we're talking about 30 frames per second games, that's going to be better on the QN90C where you're going to have a little bit more stutter going on with the LG G3 because it is an OLED TV. It has a faster response time. So those 30 FPS games are going to suffer a little bit. And if you want it, the Samsung Game Motion Plus is available, which is motion interpolation gaming at a low latency. So you can have your 30 frames per second games feel even better with that in mind. So I think that kind of does factor into it as well. All right, so I promised some buying advice for you guys. So here it is. If you are a movie watcher for regular content, if we're talking about these two TVs compared, we're not going to really factor the price into it here, then I think that the LG G3 is the better overall TV. That's the TV that I would get if I was choosing between the two and I wasn't really a gamer. Now, even if you're a casual gamer, I still do think that I would get the LG G3. It's just when you get into the category of being a more hardcore gamer or somebody who games more often than watches TV, then I think you're going to want to get the QN90 C over the LG G3 or consider a QD OLED. Some other notes is going to be that the G3 is going to have Dolby Vision. So if that matters to you, then you're going to want to pick the G3. And I already think it's a better movie watching TV than the QN90C. So I would just pick the G3 anyway, regardless of Dolby Vision. I don't factor that into my decision making too much, but maybe you do. So it is worth mentioning. For people who watch sports, I think that you might enjoy the QN90C better considering a lot of people that watch sports like to watch it in SDR at higher brightness levels. But if you're somebody who keeps the SDR a little bit lower regardless of the content, then I think the G3 will be the better sports TV for you. So it really just depends on what kind of viewer you are and how you watch your TV. I think they're both really great for sports, so you can't really go wrong with either. And the motion on both of them in regards to sports is pretty good as well. So what about burn-in? I know some of you guys are probably screaming at me right now saying I'll never get an OLED TV because of burn-in. And I'm asking you guys, why are you so concerned about it? Let's talk about this. First things first, remember that the LG G3 does come with a five-year panel warranty. That should at least give you some peace of mind, right? But I really believe that the likelihood of you having to use that warranty for burn-in is so low. Unless you're somebody who watches nothing but news channels or has a lot of channels on 24-7 with static logos and that's all you really do, then that's probably one of the only use cases that I would say don't get an OLED TV in that situation. But if you're somebody who just watches nothing but regular content like movies, TV shows, you do some gaming here and there. And even if you do a lot of gaming, I don't think you are going to be at risk of burn-in for the most part. And I get that there's a lot of fear because of the longevity tests from ratings. And when you look at the longevity test, you have to understand that this is not normal use cases. You have to remember that this is an accelerated testing process using the same content over and over. Of course, there will be burn-in developing but you're likely not going to be using your TV like this. So you're probably not going to have to concern yourself with burn-in. I personally have an LG C1 OLED TV that I've been using for two years as a monitor. And I've talked about my experience with it and I did a burn-in test with that TV. So if you wanna see the results of that, check out that video right here. And if that's not up yet, or you wanna watch a different video, check out one of the other side-by-side -side comparisons that I did right next to it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next video.